Thank you very much for staying with us. It's still TVC Breakfast. Well, after months of growing calls for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to reshuffle his cabinet, he's now dismissed five ministers. The affected ministers are the Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Ken Ohaneye. The Minister of Tourism uh, was also excused. Uh, that's Lola Adejon, Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman as well. As uh, Minister of State for Housing and Urban Development, Abdullah Mohammed Gwazo, uh, the Minister of Youth Development, Dr. Jamila Bao Ibrahim, was also affected. TVC News State House correspondent Femi Akonde tells us more. President Bola Tinubu's first Federal Executive Council meeting after his two week working leave threw up a bit of surprise. But it was also highly anticipated. A cabinet reshuffle that will reposition the administration at a time when approval ratings appeared to have dipped. Five ministers were relieved of their appointment and several more nominated as ministers, while several others were reassigned portfolios within the federal cabinet. President Bola Tinubu scrapped the Ministry of Niger Delta and approved the creation of the Ministry of Regional Development that will oversee affairs of all regional development commissions in the country. The Ministry of Sports Development was also taken out. Likewise, the Ministry of Tourism that has now been merged with the Ministry of Arts, Culture and Creative Economy. Also, after a 10-month vacuum, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation will finally get a minister following the sack of Beta Edu in January. The Federal Executive Council has taken a decision to take that Ministry of Tourism out and the functions of that ministry be transferred to uh, a new ministry called the Ministry of Arts, Culture, Tourism and Creative Economy. The President and members of Council today took a decision to rename that ministry so that all these other regional bodies will come other under this new ministry of regional uh, development. The minister of the defunct ministry of Niger Delta made some clarifications regarding the nomenclature of the new ministry of regional development, insisting it is without prejudice to the Niger Delta region. For our people over there, in the Niger Delta region, I would like them to know that that has not removed anything from them. The NDDC is still very much in place, which is still under the Ministry of Regional Development, and all other uh, such uh, agencies are there. Uh, it's just a question of change of nomenclature. Uh, that is what uh, uh, has been done. And I wouldn't want anybody in that region to begin to feel that. Uh, the Ministry of Niger Data has been scrapped and is no more in existence. The cabinet reshuffle may be part of recommendations submitted in a report by Hadiza Bala Usman, special advisor to the President on policy and coordination. She is saddled with the responsibility of appraising the performance of the ministers. Hadiza Bala Usman launched the Citizens Delivery Tracker app, which is the first digital app that empowers citizens to rate ministries, departments and agencies. It is unclear the kind of impact citizens had in the process or if their input influenced the decision to retain or sack ministers. In the coming days, the list of the several newly nominated ministers will be sent to the Senate for screening. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. Yes. And joining us now in the studio to talk about uh, this latest development from the presidency, we have two public affairs analysts uh, with us in the studio. Yodu Shomi, uh, good morning, and thank you for joining us. It's good to see you again. Good morning. Razak Olukoba is also here with us. Thank you, sir, and uh, welcome. Uh, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. All right, but uh, let, let's begin uh, with uh, Yodu here. Uh, so what do you make of this? How far-reaching? is it or is it looking like for you yeah i think um, the the shuffle um is long awaited and many people felt um the president is keeping to his promise that he will continuously 
appraise you know, the performance of ministers. That is not a job for life or for four years. Um, everything depends on your performance. You either keep your job or you'll have to leave the cabinet. Mm -hmm. And initially, some people felt it was just a bluff that there's no way how that would happen. But now we now know Israel. And the president meant every single word of what he said. And with this implementation now, nobody can hardly fault uh, the president. At least if you look, look at it, the performance from the perspectives of the public, you have a minister who is more renowned for um, being very critical and um, condemning steps taken by other people without actually people seeing what uh, she's done. doing. Look, what are you doing? If you say, look, they didn't have your permission for this, what about your ministry? What are you doing about issues? You know, you have different people within the cabinet. Some of them, we, we only heard about them when uh, they were screened by the National Assembly, and since then, we don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Many Nigerians cannot really tell you what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Then, um, if you also look at it, um, it's also making efforts to coordinate the activities of government. Uh, for instance, when you look at um, the different development commission, uh, Niger Delta Development Commission, Southwest, Northwest, Northeast, and so on and so forth, there's a need to ensure that all the activities are well coordinated and okay. in tune with the development agenda of the federal government. So uh, you can't have them operating without a coordinating body. And what the president has done with the Ministry of Regional Development is to ensure that there is a form of um, coordination, you know, of the activities of the Development um, Commission, uh, which is also commendable. The issue of um, tourism is also very clear. Um, tourism arts and culture uh, and Imagine creative arts, with, you know, merging yeah. it together um, is, is better because the government can now integrate whatever steps they are taking in those areas, particularly in relation to the youths, um, and then ensure that we can get the best because they are all intertwined somehow. So that link needs to be exploited rather than uh, a minister working as minister for creative arts or tourism separately and all that. So there's an attempt to restructure, it's re a real attempt to restructure the cabinet, to rejig it and ensure better performance. It's also important to say that um, the president is also sounding a note that, look, this has happened, this will continue to happen, we'll continue to monitor performance. If you don't um, measure up to expectation, of course, the government will do something about it. Right. And, um, okay, so at, at the point when uh, the ministers were appointed, of course, the president had indeed sounded that note of um, warning uh, that everyone should really be at his or her best. Uh, but then there was also the part where uh, citizens, uh, you know, were enjoined to also engage uh, with the system and, um, you know, let people know, let us know how the people are, are, are taking your... Um, issues as how people are running, how people are understanding your ministries and how you're working in your respective ministries. But how much of it do you think uh, was considered? Where, where I'm even heading is, who is the better judge? Is it the government screening themselves, as we see now, or the people? How much of it do you think, uh, you know, married each other in this case? Yeah, it's a shared responsibility. Then you look for the equilibrium. When the public sees this, the government will look at what the minister have done or what the agency has done. At times, it may appear to the people that the ministry is not working. But there are internal, if you are building a house, the foundation takes a long time. And the people in the area will wonder, what, have they been, what are they doing? I'm in the, on a project that for four months, I was on the, fourth, fourth, in the first floor, looking at the structural issue, the challenges, and things like that. So and that's what governance is all about, too. But looking at what the president has done, I like him for not deciding to take bullet for any of his ministers. All of them are Nigerians, and they came on board to play their role. Gone are the days when ministers were defended by the president. Gone are those days. If you work, you will be compensated. At the compliments you get, are going to get from Nigeria. But if you don't work, you will be removed and be replaced. And that is why your question becomes very relevant. They have to give us a clear roadmap so that Nigeria will have access to 
what they are up to. So it's on the basis of that roadmap we are going to assess them. I know where you are going. There may be some ministers performed that we didn't know. Mm. That is why you should be talking to Nigerians. And that's a lesson to all others too. That give us a roadmap, publicize it, let it be popular. So that at a quarterly basis, you are going to engage Nigerians that uh, this is my roadmap, oh, A, B, C, D. I omitted B because of this challenge. So Nigeria will follow off with you. We will follow off with you. That's what you are doing. That's what you are doing. So that when the time to give us your mark comes on board, before the president will say anything, Nigerians have awarded their mark already. Mm -hmm. But when you run government in an obscure manner, what I'm doing is known to only the president. The president will not say when Nigerians start talking. And the president will listen more to Nigeria than your record. When the Nigerians start having protests that this minister is not performing, that's a big issue. Now, free from this, there are some ministers who also have to also they dig them. If you look at what the president has done in decimating all the areas of security challenges in the country, there should be a follow-up. Because security is not only about federal government. The Minister for Defense and I, particularly the IG of Police needs the, to talk to the governor to, to give us what are they up to in securing their states. I'm not talking about the state police now, but it's an angle that we have to also explore. What's the role of the governors in all of this? The state government is the, the main part, the primary person that should first defend his own state before the federal police will come and you know, complement it. Otherwise, the IG will go of the previous IG. We are giving him an expo now. If he doesn't want to be condemned like other IG, he needs to bring the governors on board. Or which officer that's responsible for security in the state, that Nigerians must know what you are trying to do in Kano, in Sokoto, in Enugu, in the Niger Delta, particularly states with international boundaries. What are you doing about it? So that uh, in conjunction with the federal government, we will see clearly what the state is doing. So that when the time to apportion uh, commendation comes or blame, we will know who is at fault. So that the federal government will say, no, this is my own role. I played it. The state has refused to complement, which quickly brings bring us all to the question of power sector too. The power sector is an area that uh, no Nigeria will ever, ever complement what the president is doing. As long as we continue to have this national grid, can we have national grid breaking down? The entire country is in trouble. And we have said over and over that, see, if you run a big institution like that, you don't make it in a smaller sector. We are now running this economy, cottage industries. If the national economy breaks down today, there are cutting that, that create a buffer around it. So the power sector, the minister of power, doesn't have to be scared of the governors. Your governor in the state must give you what are they up to in power sector. How do you come out of this darkness? It's not the role of federal government alone. There should be state greed. The card is on the table for them to pick up. Mm. Why do you put it on the table for them? None of them, they run away from the responsibility, except Lagos and Rivers and some other states are trying to, trying to, Lagos is trying to do something about the social that they are going to do something. What are other states doing about the power sector? If it's under the illusion, power sector, if you're under the illusion that uh, you are going to source the problem of power sector alone by the federal government, you can't do anything. No? They are dragging Agunloye to court now. For probably what he has not done, the, the matter is in court. I'm not defending, but I'm not, I'm not also condemned who took him to court. But like he did it, many people, and he consumed them. He almost consumed Fashola too. And it's because of the model we are, the model we are operating. So the power sector minister needs to understand that. Uh, we can't come out of this alone with this national grid idea, with this national police idea. There should be a roadmap. Bring the government to it. And that's what my colleague has said about agriculture too. We have free water coming from Cameroon, and we call it a, what do you call it? Flood. Yeah. Uncontrolled mm -hmm. water. Right, right. Mm. And there are deficiencies of uh, water to water our farm. In the core, 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 core not. Mm. Water we are supposed to dump. So the minister needs to bring all the state on board. And what are you right. doing about your agriculture? I can't. No, Nigeria is doing something now. So what's Kuala doing? What's the governance in the South is doing? So you want the federal government to be feeding 250 million Nigerians. Who does that? So these are things the military needs to be doing that will gladden the heart of Nigerians that, okay, you are bringing the governance out of their shape. You are not supposed to collect allocation every month and we don't know where you spend, how you are spending all those money. 
there was connectivity between just like what right. the Tinubu has done. Mm. The connectivity between all the regional effort, the in the southeast, in the non in the, 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 the regional the, commission. There was no. that connectivity mm. on security, on power sector, on agriculture. There was that the minister mm. should establish it. Right. To make the work of the president less. Okay, let, let me compare uh, that point now that Razak Olokoba has, has made and stressed with, mm. with you. Uh, so, the buy in of governors, you know, uh, because even the examples he, he borrowed you know, from, from his analysis, can we spread them all out across the ministries, uh, perhaps to, for the people to feel your impact as the minister? Uh, spread it out. Uh, let it not just be. A top approach that's the federal approach but you know find a way to engage uh, you know across states is that is that possible do you see it as a possible uh, a way to get more impact in terms of governance at this time oh yeah of course it's quite very important um if you look at um, some of the things um, razak said it's quite clear that except you have a form of um, partnership Know, with the state government, in some areas, a minister may have even achieved a lot. But people are not seeing the effect of what they are doing on one part. Because the bottom line is, how does this affect my life? That is the, how, uh, that's exactly how the public are viewing it. And the perception of the public matters a lot. It's not enough for you, you know, to, 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 to do something. It's also important for those who you are trying to serve to see exactly what you are trying to do. And the president has not, has not kept quiet about that. Let, let, me, let me give you, let me call your attention to something. Two of the, probably two or three of the most controversial uh, ministries in Nigeria today, power, uh, power, uh, works, uh, finance. Those are ministries that uh, ministers have taken bold decisions that are affecting the lives of the people. No matter how critical people are about them, but people can see exactly what they are doing. We know exactly what is going on, you know, with finance, you know, the efforts being made to stabilize uh, the Naira. You know, the CBN is doing it, its best using monetary instruments. And uh, we begin to see the role of the uh, Ministry of Finance through fiscal measures mm. now being taken, you know, to ensure that we're able to stabilize the Naira. And we've seen some, you know, reward, you know, in terms of increasing Forex to uh, foreign reserve to $39 billion. Now, if you take the power sector, what are they doing about it? You cannot have a national grid. This is a problem which um, this regime inherited. Um, we've neglected that sector for over 50 years. You know, some of the power lines are as old as that. You know, and uh, there is no way how you can continue to run on those power lines. Let me give you a very good ex example so that you know what we're talking about. Uh, for instance, Ghana has a population of 40 million, and then they are, tr uh, they, they are generating and distributing 4,000 megawatts. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million, again, generating 4,000 megawatts. How can that work? You have um, South Africa with a population of about, you know, about uh, 50, 60 million, you know, generating over 50 thousand megawatts. That's exactly the situation with South Africa. Uh, if you compare it to a similar country like Nigeria, which is um, Indonesia, Indonesia is generating 80,000 megawatts, you know, with a similar population like us, and we're generating 4,000. So it's quite obvious that something drastic has to be done, which is what I think uh, the government is trying to do, the Minister for Power is trying to do in that sector, in order to attract the necessary investment. One is, they have to break it down. The president made that first step to say, look, open up the space, you know, for other private sector and the state governments to come in. So we are beginning to see state government engaging with the power sector. You are beginning to see that there won't be a national grid. Now, it will exist, but there would also be other state grid and other grids. But not, not, correct, not, not all Nigeria will not rely on national grid. That's my point. Absolutely. So that when... Uh, there is problem in uh, Lagos. It won't have to affect yes, Ogun uh, or your or Sokoto yes. or uh, so, any so, so you else. believe yeah. uh, the, the Minister yeah. of Power is is on is on track with his policies so far? Yes, because look, when you look at the power sector, this is sector that has suffered for over fifty years. The transmission lines are over fifty years old. How do you get the necessary investment? The, 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 you know, to change that without looking at 
you know, the tariffs without looking at the enabling environment to allow other sectors like the state governments, you know, to come in and make an impact. I mean, you are looking at uh, works, for instance, the issue of uh, Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway has been on the table before 1960. And it's the first time, you know, it's, it's, a government is trying to now implement it. So uh, when you look at issues that have been long been uh, suspended, you know, in the hair, nothing has happened. They are trying to bring it all together to make sure that these things, you know, comes to fruition. All right. Uh, over to you now. But uh, this time around, can we just, you know, focus on the Ministry of Finance, uh, you know, for example, because uh, the issue of the economy, now how stabilizing the economy had, you know, has generated so much interest, as uh, you both have, you know, uh, asserted too. People are also asking, why shouldn't we rejig, uh, you know, the team, the, the team handling, the economy handling, finance? Okay, so we have uh, Dr. Doris Antier, who, who, Anite, who is there now, Minister of State uh, for Finance. But uh, what are you seeing so far, and what do you want to see moving forward? Let's not use Bogos language that Nigerians will not mm. understand, because of, at least as a way of uh, explaining things to Nigeria that they won't understand. But let's break it down. Mm. There's no textbook in the world that you'll find Nigerian solution there when it comes to economics. That means we are supposed to prepare the mind of Nigerians that any government that is coming on board, whatever economic policy is bringing on board is experimental. It might work. It might not work. If it didn't work, all we need to do is to look at what is the next thing with the government. The error we made is the picture we have painted that in three months is going to be a dollar. And we warned that don't paint that kind of picture to Nigeria. Then let me brace off. The station period for this kind of challenge is two, three, four years. I don't Nigeria like it or not. I'm not in government. So if I express my professional view, if you don't like it, yeah, you see me on the confront me. I will engage you intellectually. Any economist that is creating an impression to Nigerians that uh, the government didn't do well, that we are supposed to be doing drastic change in the economy, is only uh, inciting Nigerians against the government. Whereas, with all the indices available, that I've used my expert knowledge, which all several other people to look at, we can come out of this in one, two, three years. Have you said that? All the things that the president has done, I don't know where he got it from, are brilliant. But the results will not come as soon as emotions of Nigerians are running. So I'm going to caution again this morning that every Nigerian should go and rework the economy of their life to be able to work, accommodate the challenge that, is, that you are passing through. There's hope. But anger should not translate to, emotions should not translate to anger to decimate our government to lose focus. Let them do what they are doing. When the pastor just got there, this is the kind of emotion so he started he brained and started borrowing to assuage our anger. Brother did it too. Wari did it too. To the extent that uh, we sold our fuel ahead of the time we are living. Maybe for 10, 20 years, I don't know. Don't push you no know, to that angle too. If anger, if emotion turns to anger again, you will start placating us again with borrowed money again. And I don't think we should do that. Condition for borrowing the previous money he has borrowed. It's worse. So in economics and in finance, you can borrow to also sort that out and look for another loan that the guillotine that we see on our neck will be, will be losing a bit. So that there will be relief for us to pay the debt in a way that's going to, not going to damage the Nigerian economy. That's what he has done. Mm. So now, every Nigerian that is watching us to go and breathe, I'm not in government. And I want them to know this. I'm not saying this for my notion. If I'm to vote yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I will still vote Inubu. That does not mean that I should not tell him the truth. And that doesn't mean that what I'm saying, I'm on his side. I'm just saying that uh, from what we have found ourselves, the story of find ourselves, all the things that the government, I don't want to start going into detail. Nigeria may not understand those technicalities that Nigeria in terms of language, index, forex. But what they are doing is perfect. What can make your currency strong? It's not a policy statement is to attract transaction to your currency. People should be demanding for your currency. I want to come for tourism. I want to buy your agro island product. I want to buy your telecoms. I want to buy oil. That's what attracts regard for currency all over the world. 
But our own currency is just oil, and oil condition in the world is getting worse. That is the reason why our currency is not picking up. And what, with what Ashwaju is doing in this transaction now, is dragging some transa uh, economy booming to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So there are people who keep demanding, yeah, I want to come to Nigeria for social transaction. That's in the international market, the exchange. What will people want to buy Naira in the international market to come and do what? But now, there are more things on board for all over the world to come and mm -hmm. see in Nigeria. And that's what we give regard to currencies strength mm -hmm. in all over the world. But, but so, you said people need to tighten their economy. I just wanted you to review, clarify their... To their, their, review yes. the bogus life anybody man might have been living. Okay, so that, that's... Look your, at the school fees. Don't take your children to where you are going to pay, where your salary will not be able. The person you want to go and collect money from also have his own challenges too. Mm -hmm. The work you are going to pick up, make sure that doesn't go on into transportation. Mm -hmm. Review my wife parks car in my children's school now. He doesn't bring his car home. 5,000, 5,000 come. It is very close distance. So he packs his car and use 700 to come back home and 700 to go back and pick instead of 70, 70 10, 10, 10, every day. So until we get out of this, let's prepare our mind. Let okay. NOA begin to work and speak to Nigerians that uh, we are not putting in, in any tight corner. We find ourselves here. And if we want to get out of it, oh, we are going to be working out of this together. We must not be far away from the government. Right. You must be doing the needful, which is to complain what the government is doing. Decimating your government. We are here for it, to continue to decimate our government. Mm. And if you attack your government to a point that they lose, they lose focus, mm. we are here for it as well. Mm. So what we need to do is to speak in this manner, right. where we say that change of minister is good. The remaining one that has not changed, give us your blueprint. What are the state doing about power sector on security? Otherwise, we we'll hold power sector minister responsible for Blame that does not belong but belong to the state. Okay. You hold IG responsible for insecurity. Okay. For things that belong to, right. not to you've, blame that belong, but to the state. Right. You've, you've already and you got made that job. point. Okay. So, so let, let me mm. come over now to uh, Mr. Shoumi. Cost of governance. Uh, you know, still eyes, you know, as a post mortem to what the, the Tinubu administration has done. Uh, does he need this much ministers, even, you know, now that he has rejigged it, does he need this much? And how will that also, um, you know, reduce the cost of governance? Because, you know, for people on the street, they say, okay, you want us to make the necessary adjustment, but is government doing the same? That, that's the big question, you know, people are, are asking. How is it looking like from your end? Yes, um, yes, uh, many people are concerned about the cost of governance. Um, in the country, before Tinubu and even during Tinubu's regime. I don't think it's more about um, the number of ministers uh, that we have. I think um, the president himself entered, you know, at the cost of governance when he said he will have a second look at the Orosa's report, which recommended over 200 uh, ministries with uh, duplicitous uh, functions, uh, that there's a need to look at that with a view to bring down the cost of governance. Most of the time, people are even more concerned about the fact that, look, government needs, government functionaries, including the members of the National Assembly, really need to tighten their belt. You cannot have a situation where, you know, the people are being told to tighten their belt and then um, at the same time, uh, Nigerians are being told that certain amount of millions is not enough, you know, a month, you know, to run a a, a constituency. So uh, these are the issues for the people. At times, you know, it's not that government is not doing its part, but they need to do more, and the president hinted at that. But I won't be surprised uh, if at a point the president will come up with his own report on um, margin of um, MDAs and all that, uh, because we, you will notice that a lot of appointments have not been done in that sector currently. So probably something on the table, but when it comes to cost of governance, we are all very concerned about it, uh, including Mr. President, that look, something has to be done to bring down the cost of governance. But we must say, uh, say it as it is. Presidential system of government is very, very yeah, expensive. That's, that's the point. That's the major problem. Except we look at our political system and then think about what do we do? Should we go back to parliamentary system? Should we go back to regional system or one thing or the other? Um, presidential system is very, no matter how the efforts you make, you will still have a very high cost of governance. All right. We've run out of time. I can say, okay, no, 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 so, so, sorry, you don't quickly. have so much time. Because in Nigerians, you can't be a son of 
a white man, you want to be born black. You can't decide to run your government the way parliament in Britain, parliament in Britain run their government, which is the decision for Nigerians. Right. That if you want to run, don't want to run the bogus, let's advocate that. Let's lessen it by running parliament. In the parliament, that's where you elect your ministers. There won't be SA, there won't be those mm -hmm. duplication of office. Mm -hmm. So, and it's like the card is on the table for us. So it's not about what you at all. It's about the system you run. He must move the way he moves because he is a president in a country where you run presidential system of government, where he needs frequent aids to attend to numerous assignments that you gave him. All right, gentlemen, a fine place to uh, leave our conversation. Uh, show me and Razak Ulukoba, thank you very much thank you for, uh, thank you for, uh, for having speaking me. with us. It's an ongoing conversation, and we will uh, continue to uh, you know, open up this, this burning issue.